now to Broadway on GMA. Our next guest, you know her, a woman of many talents from the stage to the screen. Anna Gasteyer has been entertaining us for decades, and now she returns to the Broadway stage for Once Upon a Mattress. Hi. It is so good to see nice you. Nice to see you, too. Hello. Hello. Broadway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Broadway. Okay, so first of all, I'm such a fan. Thank we, you. we loved you in Lewd, SNL, oh, of course. Oh, thanks. But now you're back on the Broadway stage, yeah. and you said that this was going to be a guaranteed joyride. That's why you joined the cast. It's exactly why. I literally, I mean, it's Once Upon a Mattress. It's based on the Princess and the Pea. It's a fairy tale. It's it's Mary Rogers' score. Richard Rogers' daughter wrote Freaky Friday, among other amazing attributes. And I just knew it was going to be fun and ridiculous. And it's it's based in sort of vaudevillian shtick. There's nothing like deep or complicated about it. It's, I play the mean, you know, terrible queen who yells at everybody. And um, I saw the cast list. It's Sutton Foster, Michael Yuri, you know, Broadway star Daniel Breaker. I mean, incredible people. Brooks, Brooks S. Branskis, and immediately said yes. Playing evil is good, huh? Uh, oh, it's, you got to play the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Especially opposite Sutton Foster. She's such a joyous and um, loving kind of personality that, uh, you know, playing mean against her is extra fun. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter really always wanted to play the bad guy when she was little when you play like you know cinderella or whatever she always wanted to be the stepmother so. okay there you go <laughs> now i ran into you in our makeup room here i was getting some eye drops you were sure. getting ready to come out here and it made me wonder what sort of pre-show routine might you have backstage before you go out to to project to the back of the house uh, you do project, and and you know I actually I have one number in this. I've done other shows where I've sung the whole show. I was Alphaba and Wicked, for example, where your whole life is you live like a nun and you're constantly warming up. This show is a little bit more going and irritating people in their dressing rooms. Uh, <laughs> my, my friend, my friend Brooks Ashmance is scare plays the wizard, does magic tricks, um, and I do warm up my voice because I have to yell at everybody. It turns out yelling's just as hard as singing. <laughs> Maybe even harder. Well, I scream at my dog all day, so I thought it would be good. Um, I have a very annoying barky terrier. So so I do have to shout quiet. It's like, there's actually a number. Quiet! I'm just constantly screaming quiet. Um, just, yeah. my, my highest actual praise so far is as I was walking out of the theater the other day, I saw all these little girls with their, their, obviously their first Broadway show with their Once Upon a Mattress playbills. And those pedicabs were going by, you know, on 45th Street with the music. And literally what I want, quiet! <laughs> so, I was like, highest praise. You're welcome, Mom. Yeah. Another world, of course, that everyone knows you from so well is SNL. And yes. You are a part of such an amazing cast. I'm yes. curious, do you guys stay in touch? Do you guys, you know, that must have been such an amazing bond. Oh, it's definitely, you know, for back, lack of a better term, the mafia. I mean, you can't really get out of it. You can't leave the family, um, <laughs> uh, even if you wanted to. And we've we've stayed very close. I mean, there, there's such a shorthand amongst anyone who's worked on SNL. And I'm very close, particularly to the women in my in my um, era. Uh, and and in general, there's a bond. I mean, if you see somebody from Saturday Night Live on the street, even if they're from a different um, cast generation, there's an immediate because it's such a sh it's such a weird kind of mutant skill set. I mean, you guys work in news. I'm sure it feels the same way, but it, it's fast. It's furious. It's unprepared. Um, you have to kind of fly by the seat of your pants. You usually are a writer performer. So there's a lot that we share in common. But obviously, you know, you showed loot. I work with a lot of my girlfriends still. I wrote um, a, a Christmas clusterfunk with my dear friend, <laughs> Rachel Dratch, which was our Hallmark Christmas parody. And we actually have written a second one. So um, there's lots of collaboration and uh, connection, especially amongst the girls, I would say. Oh, and your two kids, they must be really proud of mom having yet another moment. I, I, I'm proud or, or humiliated. I mean, I think <laughs> it's, it depends on their day. But um, I think they really love the Broadway thing. I think they, they there's something super interesting about it to them that they, you know, I call my son. We FaceTime the other day and I'm dressed as the queen. I have about 15 minutes backstage during act two and I had to make sure that he had, you know, taken a snack to his basketball tryout. And I'm all <laughs> dressed as this insane character, you know, the whole time. But um, I think... I think, yeah, I think they I think they're really proud. My daughter was three at my first preview. It was wow. her third birthday. Aww. My first preview of Wicked. Mm. So that was 18 years ago. So there's a there's she's really kind of grown up backstage oh. and, and different shows. This is my fifth Broadway show, and obviously I've done a lot of television in between. So that's amazing. Uh, Anna, uh, it is such a so pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Once Upon a Mattress is a joyride. It is, <laughs> and it's on Broadway right now. It sure is.